In this example, we're told that we have a magnet wire that's to be coated with some varnish for insulation. We're drawing it through a circular die uh, with a particular diameter, and the wire diameter is a little bit smaller and centered in the die. We're told that the varnish has a dynamic viscosity of cent uh, 20 centipoise, and it completely fills the space between the wire and the die for a length of 20 millimeters. Wires drawn through the die at a speed of 50 meters per second determine the force required to pull the wire. So let's go ahead and sketch this out so uh, we can sort of visually see what's happening. So here I'm just kind of sketching the, um, the die, and then the wire will be in here. And I'm doing a terrible job of drawing a straight line. Let me try that again. So here's the wire. So it has, uh, you know, this is a circle. Right, it's a cylindrical cylindrical wire and this is being pulled at some velocity and we have to pull it at some force f and all inside this region here and here is the varnish and we're given some dimensions here so let's put a center line this diameter or this radius out to here is we'll call r sub i for the inner radius and then the radius out to this is R sub O for outer radius. And we're told the whole thing has a length L. Right, so this is, this only goes out to a length L. Okay, so now we're trying to find the force required to pull this wire, you know, off to the right here. And the reason we have to apply some force is because the varnish in here will want to resist the movement of the the wire. In fact, if we sketch out the velocity field for the varnish, we know that from the no-slip boundary condition, the velocity at the walls will be zero, and then the velocity at the at the wire will be v. Right, so we know we'll have that those boundary conditions for the velocity, so it'll be a velocity v on the wire surface. That comes from the no-slip boundary condition. Now, since the gap is pretty small, because we're told that the diameter is 0.9 millimeters and the wire diameter is 0.8 millimeters, so it's a very small gap, we're going to make the assumption that the velocity profile in here is linear. Now, it's not exactly linear in real life, but it's a pretty good approximation. This is called a Coet flow approximation. Remember that a Coet flow is a velocity profile that's linear. You have uh, no pressure gradients driving the flow, it's just the movement of the boundary that's driving the flow through the no-slip boundary condition. And so the velocity profile is linear. We're going to um, just make that assumption. And in rea reality, it's not exactly linear, but it's pretty darn close. Let's put a coordinate system in here as well. So we're going to call that the radial direction, and this is the x direction. So what's happening is the fluid in here, the varnish, is resisting the motion of the wire because uh, through the action of viscosity, there are viscous stresses. We know that when you have some velocity gradient, there will be viscous stresses associated with that. Okay, so we're going to have to overcome those viscous stresses. And we know that the force that we have to apply is going to be equal to the viscous, the total viscous force resisting our movement. So the total viscous force will be the shear stress acting on the wire. So this will be the shear stress in the on an R face acting in the X direction, because that this is the R face, it's, it's a normal, let me see if I can sketch this in here, the normal vector for that area is pointing in the R direction, and it's the shear stress that's in the X direction that we care about, because here's the X direction. So it'll be that shear stress, oops, let me undo that, it's going to be this shear stress, evaluated specifically when r is equal to the inner radius because that's touching the wire surface, right? It's occurring at r is equal to um, ri. We just want it at the wire surface. And that's going to be multiplied by the entire surface area. Let me highlight that in yellow. The entire surface area of the wire. The surface area of that wire is going to be its circumference, 2 pi ri times its length, which will be L. So that's the force that we'll have to overcome. By the way, in general, you would normally have to do an integral for this, you know, break up this area, this yellow area, into little bits and integrate it. But I know that 
since it's the same velocity profile all throughout here and all around the circumference, I don't have to worry about an integral because it's, it's all the same shear stress everywhere. Okay, so now we need to evaluate what that shear stress is. So the shear stress, R face in the x direction, so R is equal to Ri, will be the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. We're assuming that the varnish is Newtonian. Um, we'll make that assumption frequently in the course. And then that'll be multiplied by the velocity gradient um, dux dr. It's how the velocity in the x direction, which is you know, this, this velocity is pointing in the x direction, dux, how it changes it in the radial direction. You can see that the velocity in the x direction changes with radius there. And specifically, we want to evaluate that at the inner radius. We want to see how that gradient, what that gradient is right at the surface of the wire. So we could write down the equation. You know, we see it's an equation of a line. We could work it all out. I'm just going to do it a little more, um, less mathematically and just a little more physically. So the change in the x velocity as we go from the surface out to here, since this is a straight line, it'll all have the same slope. So this change in the velocity from here to here will be um, the, the final velocity is equal to zero. The initial velocity is v, right? So I'm just doing the velocity here minus the velocity here. And then over that'll be over the change in the radius. So the final radius is ro, and the initial radius is ri, right? So the velocity at ro, the outer radius, is 0. So you can see that here. And then the velocity at ri is v. So now you can see that here. So this gives me the velocity gradient. And again, I can do this specifically because this is a linear profile. Now, if this was a curved profile, I'd actually have to write out the equation for ux and then take the derivative. But since it's linear here, I know that the, the gradient is going to be a constant. It'll just be a straight line slope here, and so that'll give me a constant gradient. So this comes out to be uh, minus um, mu times um, minus v over r naught minus ri. And as far as it being evaluated at the inner radius, it doesn't really matter here because it's it's going to be the same velocity gradient along any at any radius because this again is a straight line, so it has a constant slope. So we can plug that in. Oh, one other thing I should point out is you'll notice that uh, we have this negative sign. Okay, I, sh I should be a little more careful about this. Let me let me zoom in. So here is the wire, and here's a little fluid particle, okay? And remember that this shear stress is the shear stress acting on the fluid particle. Well, this one is actually. This is the shear stress acting on the fluid particle. So a positive shear stress acting on the fluid particle, this is a positive tau Rx stress, looks like this, right? Since it's negative, what that means is that the shear stress acting on the fluid particle is actually in the opposite direction. So it's actually pointed that way, right? So that the, the actual shear stress, since it's negative here, means that it's actually pointing that way. So this is the, the stress that the wire is exerting on the fluid particle, because remember, this is the stress acting on the fluid particle. So it's actually, the wire is trying to pull the fluid particle along. That's why it's moving at velocity v here. So the stress that the, that the um, fluid particle exerts on the wire will be equal and opposite, and it'll try to hold back the wire, okay? So that's just to kind of give you an idea for, uh, you know, just kind of zoom in and better understand the direction of these stresses. So let me just make a note of this. So this is the stress exerted on the fluid particle. That's that one. And what I want here is the stress exerted on the wire. So I should be taking an equal and opposite value for the stress exerted on the wire. right? So I just take this 
and just flip the sign to give me the stress exerted on the wire. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So the F will then, the force will then be mu times V over R naught minus Ri times two pi Ri times L. And that is the force that we need to apply in order to move the wire at a uh, given speed V. Now, I went through some detail here talking about, you know, the sign of this tau Rx, kind of going through this argument. Normally, you don't have to go through that. You can reason it out just physically looking at it. You know that um, this, the stress here will need to be positive in order to move this off to the right-hand side. So you can normally do these things just by observation to get the correct signs, but I just wanted to show you what this negative means is, is it, this is the stress exerted on the fluid particle, so a negative stress means it's actually this kind of red, it's in this red direction. The wire's trying to pull the fluid. Okay, well, at this point, we can uh, plug in the values. So we're given that, uh, you know, Ri is, uh, well, actually, we're told that the diameter of the inner part is 0.8 millimeters. So Ri will be 0 0.4 millimeters. The diameter of the outer part was 0 0.9 millimeters. So R sub O, 0 0.45 millimeters. We're told that the length is, what is the length? 20 millimeters. We're told that the velocity is I believe 50, yeah, 50 meters per second, it's right there. And the last thing was the viscosity. We're told the viscosity of the varnish was 20 centipoise, so 20 centipoise. So you'd need to know how to convert that over to, um, you, how to convert that over to uh, normal SI units it'll come out to be 0 0.02 pascal seconds. Okay, so you can take all these values, plug them in, and the force you'll get will turn out to be one Newton. Okay, so hopefully that example makes sense to you. Um, just to kind of recap what we did here, what we did is we assumed that we had a coet velocity profile where the velocity gradient is a constant. That velocity, so the shear stress that acts on this yellow surface of the wire is just mu times dux dr. We found the velocity gradient just from the, the slope, constant slope here. We just did how the velocity changes over how the radius changes. The force would just be that shear stress multiplied by the area over which that shear stress acts. That's just the yellow bit here. I talked a little bit about the sign convention, but you don't really have to worry too much about that in general. You can reason these things out just by observation. And we also did not need to integrate here because the shear stress remained constant over that whole yellow surface area, so we don't have to integrate. And we ended up with our final expression. The only other thing was just converting from centipoise to pascal seconds. You just need to know how to do that before you can get the number. Okay, we'll go ahead and end it there.